Hi, this is Gary K7 EMF at True Ladder Line. This morning we're going to uh, take a look at Simnec 2.1. All of you who have received our circuit files for Simnec and using 2.1 you'll need a new set of files in order for 2.1 to function. So if you uh, do need them, contact me and I'd be happy to uh, email them to you. So now let's take a look at Simnet 2.1 Antenna and System Modeling Software. Okay, we've just started uh, Simnet, so we're going to load a circuit. So we click on File, Load Circuit, and we select and we find find uh, the file we're looking for which is inverted V dash BAL ATU which is inverted V with a balanced ATU should be a file that I have emailed to you and uh, it should have a dash F after it indicating that it uh, operates in feet so we'll load that file and now we're set up and running First thing we do is set our wire size, and for mine it's going to be 16G for 16 gauge. The next box down is RH, which is the right hand leg height above ground. I'm going to make that 20 feet. Hit the tab button. The left hand height above ground end of the antenna is 20 feet. Hit the tab button to enter. The length of my antenna, my dipole, is 215 feet tab to enter and my height above ground at the feed point the center of the antenna is 50 and tab okay the ladder line we have it set up for 600 ohm if we want to change that we left click on it and we have a pull down and uh, I'm going to leave it at double click on it leave it at 600 and then in this box we load the length of the ladder line in my case 45 feet and uh, now we're ready to tune the antenna. So the C1 block would be the capacitor in the uh, ATU circuit. The A block would be the two roller inductors. This is a balanced ATU. And uh, so we're going to tune in order to get the resultant impedance, which is over here on the Smith chart, is represented by this circle, which we want to be located right at the 50 ohm spot right in the middle non-reactive so first thing we're going to do is we know we've got to increase the capacity so I'm going to click on the capacity box push the up arrow there should be a P after it indicating picofarads you notice as I increase it you can see what's going on in the Smith chart now I'm going to reduce the uh, inductance on the rollers and we're bringing it around that's looking good and then we uh, increase the capacity a little more and get it out to the 50 ohm circle on the Smith chart. Reduce the inductance and we're coming around, we're tuning, tuning. And we have resolution at 1.02 to 1. You can see up in the G box. Frequency is 1.9 megahertz, our transmitter generator frequency. And in the parentheses here we have 1000 indicating 1000 watts. So, so we move over underneath the B block, if you follow my mouse, we're putting 940 watts into the antenna, which would be 94% efficiency. We're dumping 54 watts into the feed line, the true ladder line. The capacitor is dissipating 4.8 watts. The roller inductors are dissipating 4.8 milliwatts. So now let's go to... Uh, 75 meters, we'll go 3.9 megahertz, and we'll tune again. We know we've got to reduce the capacity, so I click on the capacitor box, push the down arrow to reduce the value of our capacitor. We can see it changing on the Smith chart, and we're going to take it down here. We know it's going to be a low number. And then we're going to uh, adjust the uh, roller inductors. So I clicked on the uh, Micro Henry box and bringing that down. It's coming down nicely. 
and uh, now we run this on down okay there we're on the 50 ohm circle increase the roller inductors a little bit and we have a resolution if you look over here 983 watts to the antenna 98.3 percent efficient but look we have a problem right here our uh, capacitor is at 9.2 picofarads the ATU 4K minimum with the vacuum variable is 10 picofarads so that's not going to work so well or it'll work but it'll be on the ragged edge so let's uh, exercise one of our tools let's change this from 600 ohm line to our 450 true ladder line that we just came out on the market with recently and um, and then from experience I'm going to change the capacitor mode by dragging and dropping the C1 to the other side of the roller inductor so we just switched impedance modes now I'm going to reduce the inductance and increase the capacitance by holding the up key and you see now it's starting to come in okay so you notice over here see the green color of the C1 uh, block you notice the green trace here this is the actually the effect of the capacitor the purple is the effect of the uh, roller inductors. So now you see as we change this, I'm sorry, we go to our roller inductors, we're at 4.7 microhenries. If we increase that, you see how it swings it in this direction. If we decrease it, it's, it uh, swings the phase, and there we have a resolution. So we take a look at this, we have 4.4 microhenries, which is in the range of the roller inductor in the ATU, 629 picofarad, which is quite nicely in the range. Our efficiency, 93.98, slightly lower than before, but we have a nice resolution, so we will probably leave it there. So now, let's go to, let's take a look at the uh, antenna, to see what kind of a pattern we have. Roll, use our mouse wheel to scroll out. We're looking straight down on the antenna. And uh, we're going to change the... Um, there we go. Okay, now... Okay, we're still looking down on the antenna. The red is the highest intensity. So I'm going to tilt this around. We're, you can see the blue is the inverted V. And now we're moving it around, so we're looking at it from the horizon. So now we're looking at the side of the antenna. See, it's our high intensity uh, field is up straight up at the top, and that is because of our height above ground. And uh, we can we can see what we have here. So, so I'm going to we're going to s rotate this sideways, and we can see that there's uh, not a whole lot of difference. Uh, off of the ends of the antenna. We don't have the null like we would with um, a flat top. And you see that we have a, almost an anomaly pattern. Not quite, but pretty close. This is what we would expect. So now let's go to uh, 20 meters. 14.2, we'll say. And uh, let's go back here again and look at the uh, pattern. Oh, we got quite a different pattern now. I'm going to zoom in with a mouse wheel. And there's our pattern. The reason the amplitude is down is because I've not resolved the impedance with the ATU. There's looking straight down from the top down toward from the top down to the antenna, and this is looking from it on the side which would be the horizon so you can see these lobes right here are pointing almost at the horizon so it's got a nice low angle and it also has a high angle radiation so that give you an idea of what this antenna the radiation pattern envelope looks like so there you have it Simnec 
SIMNAC 2.1 requires the new files that we are sending out. So if you have the older files that I sent you, if you want to uh, use SIMNAC 2.1, you'll need the new ones. So uh, just let me know and I will uh, email you the, uh, the new files. And if you're new to this, we also offer free antenna system modeling if you don't want to uh, jump into this quite this deep. And uh, th there's no charge for this. We're happy to help out. So let, just send me an email if you would uh, like some help with this. If you want to do this yourself, SimNEC is free of charge. And if you go to our product categories and over on the left, you'll see SimNEC sys antenna system modeling free. Click on that and then click on more details over to the right. Scroll down and you'll see a link where you can find SimNEC for free and download it. And at the same time, click on uh, the cart and purchase SimNEC, which will cost you nothing. That will give me your contact information and I will email you these files and you'll be up and running. So thank you for watching. This is Gary K7EMF and I'm going to say seven threes.